Welcome back to Foul News. Today I'm going to teach you the easiest way possible on how to replace your 1999 Subaru's downstream O2 sensor. Yeah, these cars are a little old and they tend to get a little rusty, so you definitely want to bring uh, some kind of torch with you. This is just a map gas torch, a propane torch, or uh, any other kind of really flammable hot thing. Well, should be able to get that sensor loose. Then next you're going to want to use um, one of these oxygen sensor uh, sockets. You can pretty much find these at any parts store or any uh, tool store really, they're pretty universal. 7 8 or 22 millimeter either or will work just fine. However, uh, my old O2 sensor, I wasn't able to get this around there for some reason. The, it seemed like there was plenty of space, it just wouldn't fit over the O2 sensor and you'll see that in the actual video itself. So I had to use a 7 8 wrench, uh, which worked just fine after a bit of heating up from our good old friend Matt Gas Torch. And then, what happened after that was, uh, the threads were all dickered from the uh, O2 sensor being so stuck in there and it being all old and whatnot. So I had to run out and grab one of these uh, thread chases. It's probably a good idea to pick one of these up in advance so you're not driving around with uh, just an open bum hole spraying out the fumes everywhere. And then next you're going to need a ratchet. Just a 3 8 drive is fine. Or if you have a half for this, it's really... It's really more for if you can get one of these over your sensor. And of course if you're going to run a, cha a thread chaser through there, you're going to need a ratchet as well. I just had Taco Bell so I look like crap. And lastly you're going to need your oxygen sensor. Now this is the old one. I think I paid like, uh, I don't know, 60 bucks at Advance Auto with a coupon for this um, old O2 sensor, <laughs> for the new O2 sensor. This is what the old one looks like. The new one looks pretty much just like this. Except it's got a different color, a um, little wire shielding or something, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you'll see. It doesn't take very much time at all to do. If you don't run into the issue where the uh, thread's all dickered, then you'll have to worry about uh, taking as long as it did in the video, which I guess that all labor all in probably took me about 15 minutes. It should take you about 5 to 10 minutes to do it yourself. This should be standard for all 1998 to 2002 Subaru Foresters, and I'm sure many other Subaru models, I'm not sure until which year probably share the same process. On our next video, map gas torch versus oxygen sensor. Red hot, red hot, red hot, red hot. So the first thing you want to do is jack up your car. There's a jack point in the middle behind the oil pan. That's the main one I use. And then I supported it with a jack stand here, kind of underneath the uh, driver's side door and there's another one over by the passenger side door. The shop light's dying quickly. Yeah, the next the uh, O2 set, the downstream O2 sensor is going to be right here after the catalytic converter. They have a nice little hole there. Unfortunately, I could not fit my 7 8 over the side of it. I had to use a 7 8 wrench and um, it was really stuck on there good. I cracked it off just for the sake of time. Sorry for the camera wobble, but oh. you're going to want to heat it up. I use a map gas torch, gets really hot, I think it's like a 3800 degree flame. That's really the easiest way to break these things loose. You can sit there and have PB Blaster on it for a while. After enough, um, enough heat and some of that 7 8 elbow grease, I was able to get that O2 sensor broken free no problem. Then there's that clip down here which I unclipped. So I just wanted to unclip that fast without having to worry about filming it. It's no problem, there's just a little push-in clip on the bottom back side there you can see. That comes out real easy. And then once you've got that loose, you can just go ahead and uh, start unbolting it. You also want to pull this wire through because it will get caught and you don't want to rip it or rip it out of the socket. So you've got to really do that first unclip that little wire first but hitting a couple a couple of tough spots I'm hoping I didn't just pull the threads out but yeah so I'm gonna unbolt this and then show you what it looks like all right so the sensors out that's what it looks like uh, if you use some heat the sensor will probably still be hot so I'm not gonna worry about grabbing it right away I forgot to mention if you're gonna use the heat to get the sensor out you want to heat up the uh, the threads here. You want to heat up this little uh, bung that they go into. You have heat for my bung hole because that's what you want to expand to release these threads here. These threads look pretty mangled. I'm hoping 
Yeah, that's not focused at all for you guys. There we go. Yeah, these threads look pretty friggin' mangled. So I'm hoping that the new one can thread in. Otherwise, I've got to find whatever thread this is and a tap or something or a chase to get those threads back to normal before putting the new sensor in. All right, so the new sensor is here. It's a Bosch. Uh, that's what the plug-in looks like. I put some anti-seize compound on there for if when I've got to take it out again. Looks pretty much exactly like the old one, just different color wire. No big deal. I'm going to try to thread that back in and see how she goes. So I happen not to have the right thread chase. I ran out to Advance Auto and picked up one of these um, O2 sensor thread chasers. I'm going to give that a shot, see how it works. So the thread cleaner fits right on to a 3 8 I was able to get it in there and whoop, of course. <laughs> Alright, so I might have to do it with one hand or two hands to stabilize this so I don't start walking in the threads. But you pretty much just put it on there. You ideally want to try to thread that in by hand, but the first threads are so dickered that it's not even really happening. So I'm going to go ahead and set the camera down and go try to do It's biting in there real good now. So just kind of want to go forward, work your way out. This is pretty much, I mean, this is not almost another DIY in itself, but yeah, walk it back out. This is a good idea to use some oil. I've got a little bit of uh, oil on there. It's hard to tell. I think most of it fell in the bun. And um, you also kind of want to use, you might want to use anti-seize compound. It wouldn't be a bad idea here. I didn't. But I'm going to work with this a bit and then see if I can get the O2 sensor thread. Alright, so that thread chaser definitely did the trick. I would definitely recommend picking one up, especially if you have an older mileage car. This is 215,000 miles on it. 99 Forester. A bit rusty. Reconnected the clip back there. Just run the wire through this little... You know, a little heat shield to support bar thing, McBobber hole there. Snap her back in, make sure you feel a nice, tight, secure connection there. And then we're going to go ahead and see if we can clear the code and see how she runs. Alright, even though I, we did all that work, got the O2 and the knock sensor done, check engine lights off, I still managed to get rejected. Denied. That's because the, uh, look at my hair, man. I haven't even, like, can you, can you even see me? Doesn't matter. Uh, that's because the DMV is so, so close I was able to just kind of drive there. It's just about a mile and a half away, maybe two miles the most. So the ECU had a whole bunch of stuff that wasn't ready. Uh, in terms of oxygen sensor wasn't ready. Uh, a couple of little other things weren't ready because it just cleared all the codes and whatnot. So I'm going to go back there probably Wednesday or Thursday. Today's, two, uh, today's Monday. And then see what it does. Should pass once it's racked up a couple of miles. I'll check uh, with my OBD scanner to see if there's anything that says not ready still because Torque does give you that for certain sensors. And that's what's going to happen. But thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the like button if you liked it. And uh, share it with a friend too.